So 8.4 is about logarithmic and exponential equations, and that's on pages 404 to 415 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is the same. It's 30.9, demonstrating an understanding of logarithms, including evaluating logarithms, relating logarithms to exponents, deriving laws of logarithms, and solving equations and graphing. Our lesson objectives today, number one, you need to learn how to solve a logarithmic equation using logarithmic laws. Number two, to recall how to verify your answers and how to discard extraneous answers. And number three, to learn how to solve exponential equations with different bases by applying logarithms. So one of the skills that you will need in order to solve logarithmic and exponential equations is the ability to switch between the two. So to be able to switch between logs and exponents. So remember that y equals log cx is the same thing as saying x equals c to the y. And being able to go from one to the other will help you immensely. So there are essentially three types of equations that you need to be able to solve. Number one, equations that only include logarithms. Number two, equations that have logarithms and constants. And number three, exponential equations that have different bases. So our first type of equation is equations that include only logarithms. So here is the example. It says log 7x plus log 74 equals log 712. So the thing that you want to do here is to make sure that you combine logs on each side. And so we have log 7x plus log 74. Well, remember that if we're adding two logs together, we can change that into a single base and we would be multiplying those together. And so now we get log 74x equals log 712. Well, since we have the logs, same logs on both sides, um, you can now eliminate the logs altogether. So we get 4x equals 12, and that means that x will have to equal 3. So our second type of equation is equations that have logarithms and constants. So our example is log 2x minus 6 equals 3 minus log 2x minus 4. So what you want to do here is you want to get all your logs on one side and then combine them. So anything with a log needs to go on one side and then combine using our log laws. So we have log 2 of x minus 6 and we're going to move this other log over by adding log 2 of x minus 4 and that equals now 3. So we actually end up having log 2 of x minus 6 times x minus 4 equals 3. Now, since we don't have a log on both sides of the equation, we have to make sure that um, we don't just remove this log. But we can write this as an exponential equation. So this is 2 to the power of 3 equals x minus 6 and x minus 4. So after you do, after you combine your logs, you want to rewrite as a exponential equation. So what we do now is we just simply, uh, simply answer this equation. So we have eight on the left hand side and we have x squared minus 10x plus 24 on the right. So we move the 8 over to the right hand side, we get x squared minus 10x minus 16, or plus 16, sorry. And that gives us two answers, or two factors. Uh, that would be negative 8 and negative 2. So two numbers that multiply to 16, but add to negative 10. So that means my answers are x equals 8 and x equals 2. So now we're going to verify our answers, make sure that they're reasonable. Remember that we can't have the log of a negative number. So if I plug 8 or 2 into this first equation, do I get a negative answer? Well, in the first case, I get 8 minus 6, which is 2, and that's okay. But with the x equals 2, I get 2 minus 6, which is negative 4. So 2 is, can't be one of our answers because it gives me a negative value. So I am discarding the answer of x equals 2. And for the same reason on this side, we can't have the log of a negative number. If I plug in an 8, I'm okay. But if I plug in that 2 again, I get a negative answer. So that's when you know that you can discard this answer. Um, it is not an answer that works with your equation. And our last type of equation are exp exponential equations that have different bases. So for example, solve and round your answers to two decimal places. So we've got 6 to the power of 3x plus 1 equals 8 to the power of x plus 3. So one thing that you can do with logarithms, just like anything, um, 
you can apply a log to both sides. So we're going to take the log of both sides. So that's log of 6 to the power of 3x plus 1 equals log of 8 to the power of x plus 3. Notice that I'm not putting in a base here. We'll leave it as a base 10, and that way we can use our calculators in the end. Because remember that your calculators work with a base of 10. So if you're going to write down the steps, I'd say take the log of both sides. And then we're going to apply some of our logarithm rules. So if we have uh, something raised to a power, a log raised to a power, that's like saying that power multiplied by the log. So we can do that on both sides. And now we just have a binomial multiplied by a monomial, so we're going to expand. So that's 3x log 6 plus just log 6. And then we have x log 8 plus 3 log 8. Now, what you really want to do is make sure that you um, can get your x's on one side and everything else on the other. So you want to take all your x's to one side. So to do that in this e equation, we're going to move the x's to the left hand side and we're going to move anything that doesn't have an x to the right hand side. So this now becomes 3x log 6 minus x log 8 equals 3 log 8 minus log 6. So now on the left hand side we have two terms and, and they each have an x in them, but they're not like terms so we can't add them. But what we can do in mathematics is take out a greatest common factor. So we're going to take out a greatest common factor of x. And that leaves me with 3 log 6 minus log 8 on the left hand side. And what else happens is that now I've, I can isolate my x by dividing both sides by 3 log 6 minus log 8. And that way this whole factor cancels out. And we get this expression that if we plug into our calculator, so log 8 times 3 minus log 6 divided by log 6 times 3 minus log 8, we will get a final answer of 1.35. So you should try that in your calculator. You should get an answer that's 1.35. It asked us to round it to two decimal places. And again, if you, if you wanted to, or if you needed to, or if they asked you to um, verify this as a solution, you would plug the 1.35 in for x, and you should get two answers that are pretty close to being the same number. Now, because we've rounded it to two decimal places, um, we might not be that accurate, as accurate as you want. So you have to take into account that this is 6 raised to a, an exponent and 8 raised to an exponent. And these could be very large numbers. So the less accurate we are with our decimals um, in the exponent, these things are probably not going to be exactly the same number. But they'll be close enough for you to be able to verify that 1.35 is your answer. And finally, our last example. It says the rate at which an organism duplicates is called its doubling period. So the general equation is nt, n of t, equals n naught or n0, uh, times 2 to the power of t divided by d. Where n is the number present after time t, so this, is, this n here is how much is um, there after a certain amount of time has elapsed, n naught or n0 is the original number, and d is a doubling period. E. coli is a rod-shaped bacterium commonly found in the intestinal tract of warm-blooded animals. Some strains of E. coli can cause serious food poisoning in humans. Suppose a biologist originally estimates the number of E. coli bacteria in a culture to be 1,000. After 90 minutes, the estimated count is 19,500 bacteria. What is the doubling period of E. coli bacteria to the nearest minute? So filling in this equation, we know that in the end, there is 19,500 bacteria. Initially, there was 1,000, and the time that has been elapsed is 90 minutes, but we don't know the doubling time. So now we have an equation that we need to solve. It has exponents in the, sorry, it has a variable in the exponent, and so we're going to use logarithms to help solve this equation. First thing we're going to do is divide both sides by 1,000, so we get 19.5 on the left-hand side, and we get 2 to the power of 90 divided by d on the right. Now we can take the log of both sides. And this is the easiest way to solve this sort of a, this question. I mean, a, 
I guess you could, if you wanted to, um, find a value for D using guess and check, and, and then and trial and error, and then figure out two to the power of 90 divided by this number would have to give you a number that's pretty close to 19.5. Instead, we'll use logarithms. So remember our log law that says if we have an exponent, we can move that in front and turn it into a multiplying question. So we get 90 over D log two equals log of 19.5. Now, if I wanna solve for D, I'm gonna move D up to the other side by multiplying and I'm gonna divide both sides by log 19.5. So what happens then is I get an equation that looks like D equals 90 log two divided by log of 19.5. So again, I've just multiplied both sides by D and then I divided both sides by log of 19.5. And in the end, I get an answer. When I plug this into my calculator, I get an answer of 21, which just means it takes 21 minutes to, for E. coli to double. In summary, a knowledge of your logarithmic laws helps immensely when simplifying logarithmic and exponential equations. You need to know how to solve three different types of equations, and each has its own unique steps. And I guess you also need to be able to identify these equations so you know which um, steps to follow. So the first one is an equation that only has logarithms in it. Second one is an equation with logarithms and a constant. And your third is an exponential equation that has different bases. Your assignment, pages 412 to 415, uh, good luck and we'll see you in class.